play you too. Hi, I'm Maureen Tara Nelson, MTN Matchmaking Friday Facebook Live with my brother, Brian Dillon. Yeah, yeah. I finally oh, said it right. Finally says it right. I'm married two years and she finally says my name correctly. I like to say Jensen because it's my maiden name, so, you know. Yeah, it, it is mine too. <laughs> But I don't go by that anymore, and I only go by it on Facebook because, you know, that's how people find you. So I include my right. old name. But on my driver's license, it just says Brian Dillon on it. Hmm. Well, I miss my maiden name, but the boys said when they were younger for me not to change. So I didn't. But maybe well, I should just change all of MTN matchmaking to... Yeah. Maureen Jensen. Do you, what do you um, think? No, no um, because do you understand the work, the <laughs> absolute work that's involved? Uh, oh, yes, I'm way too lazy. I'm joking, joking, joking. So much. When I said, oh, yeah, I want to do that, because, you know, that's what I think, you know, married couples should do. And um, so I decided to do it. Um, you know, I'm retired, so I don't really have to explain my First name. First of all, you're not retired because... You have a part-time job well, at MTN Matchmaking. I'm, I'm retired. I'm retired. <laughs> That's you what can't. I say. I am retired. Okay, <laughs> but there are ladies that count on you. When you went on vacation last week, who had to deal with all of them? Who uh, had to hear them screaming, where's Brian? Where's Brian? We love Brian. Why isn't Brian answering our emails? All right. Well, I was on vacation last week, and we got home last. Today's Friday. We got home last Monday, yeah, last Monday night, and I'm still doing laundry. Oh, my God. I haven't done laundry in years. That's because it's upstairs, and you don't like going upstairs. <laughs> That's true. Frightening uh, up there. We yeah. the four bedrooms. So I, I went, I was on vacation, and we had a full week away, and um, you kept email him oh you not kept but you did it once say okay you're gonna work today i was like how many times do i need to tell you i've worked on vacations before yeah but that's your business this is just me helping you uh ryan zinke says hello hi ryan and debbie and deb uh sissoni shikoni oh. hi um, deb her I uh, wish I was able to see this like I always used to be able to, but right. I don't know. Ever since they changed it to the Facebook Messenger, so Brian and I could be next to each other, I, I have no access to any of this, so we have to leave it up to Brian. Right. So. right. Um, and now I'm, I'm on my laptop, you know, on, on, in my dining room because you didn't like my old. Uh, you oh, I like that clock. Yeah, you didn't like my old backdrop with the dog toys. So now I have to use Crash. my <laughs> now I have to use my little laptop, um, and I don't have the dual screen, so. That's, oh, so we're not dual screen. Uh, no, I only have the one screen and my phone, and I'm trying to share this, share now okay. public. Uh, but shouldn't you be doing this later? Come on, we got lots to do. Come on. <laughs> We have dating questions to answer, for God's sake. I have a million things to do today. Right. Plus, I want to work on my tan and swim oh, still. Yes, that is, uh, that's uh, the high priority, your, your suntan. Uh, uh, just for an hour for my lunch break. And I swim with Kevin. But it's already 2.30. So. I know, he's coming right after Facebook Live. So I tried to talk Kevin into doing Facebook Live again. And he's like, oh, um... Uh, um, 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 Spit it uh, out. Uh, that's what I said. So then at that point, I get a text from Janet. Oh, boy. Janet texted, Kay is not doing Facebook Live today. Oh, I think How we, funny we, is we, that? We could because he's funny. He just sits there and, he, and he, I think he adds some humor to the... Uh, well, it take him a whole paragraph when I could say to someone in one sentence. So, 
Uh, Jeffrey Reynolds says hello. Oh, hey, Jeffrey. Wait, Jeffrey? Jeff. Oh, well, that's what it says here. Jeff was on channel 11. But um, when I was on channel 11, I had a different, um, I was on the morning, so the people, the reporters were different, but I was kind of hoping that it would have been the same reporters because that would have been cool, so. Yeah, uh, I came across, I was watching an old time TV show. I, I, I tend to get caught in the YouTube vortex, you know, like rabbit hole where you watch one thing after another after another. No, no I, I don't know that. <laughs> and I found myself watching very old uh, game shows and one of the contestants was a man named Jeff Tarr, T-A-R-R, -R, and he ran one of the first matchmaking um, businesses. What, in, what, what? In the 50s. And what he would do, he would go to colleges and get college students, and it started off there. And he charged them $3 for a questionnaire. Wait, and, is he from Ireland? No. Oh, I don't know. This is a famous guy in Ireland. Well, I don't know how famous he is, but I did look him up, and there was an article written about him. <laughs> how he would go Just to the one article? what? Just one article. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I only read one article. I wasn't that interested. I, I, think, I might have one article on me. I think. I, oh yeah, I'm sure you have a lot more. But anyway, my point is. Stop it, brother! Stop. Uh, Okay, dating questions that people wrote in. Yeah, well, and Cindy, I am so sorry. Look at Barnes' face when he gets mad. Cindy, you wrote in a great dating question on Friday when we were done. It was fantastic, and I promised that we were going to use it, but that's way too in advance for me. So I, sorry, we, I lost it. <sighs> lost it. Sorry. But we do yeah. have a lot of good dating questions, I think. Can you search the email? I have three different work phones. Right, here, we go. Right, here we go. Two. Right. The other one is charging over there. Plus, people could text or email me. It would take me a half hour to look through for that. All right, can we please get back to my interesting story? Okay. About the matchmaker from the, the game show, he was a. It was to tell the truth. I don't like to talk about competition. I'm very competitive. Well, I, I'm sure. I'm sure he's dead by now, okay. so there was no competition. But he would charge college students three dollars for a questionnaire. College students don't need matchmakers because when we're in college, mm -hmm. did you ever? <laughs> Brian just gave me a lecture before, <laughs> and he said, "Whatever you do, stop." talking about your business because it's annoying to people and here i go in two seconds but this yeah. is really important it's in not college, sales mode it's not sales mode it's it's letting people know that when we're in college it is the easiest time to find people that we are compatible with because we're all in college for the same reason whereas once you graduate college yes you could find people with attraction and that's chemistry but when it comes to compatibility, you don't have that anymore because you're not in college anymore. Okay. That now, was just the point I wanted to make. Go ahead. If you let me finish, you'll say, oh, that's what you meant by this whole topic. Okay. Could you just talk a little bit quicker just because I'm busy? I live in Texas now. Now yes. I have the Texas way of being nice and calm. I've learned already, and you're talking almost as slow as Kevin, so just pick up the pace. Please. So he would charge three dollars for a questionnaire. He told us that four times. And what he found was that good-looking people, when they were asked, "Are you good-looking?" Good look, good-looking people would right. say no. Yes, right. Not yeah. good-looking people would say yeah. yes, and he yeah. found that to be very interesting. So he would he made a million-dollar business um, based on on that. Like he knew how people were going to ask, answer, so he was able to match them up accordingly. Now, one of our funny jokes is that any woman 50 and above, anyone, whenever they call, and ladies, I'm sorry, I got to throw you under the bus, 
So now, you know, just don't do this. Don't call us up and say, hi, I'm 57, 50, blah, blah, blah. But everyone tells me I don't look my age. And they do. They look, in fact, 60s. But oh, well, the no. women that don't do that, just like that guy is saying, they're the ones that look hot. So. Well, uh, what uh, what you do, what I don't like what people do in this, I think you do, is that you lie about your age. Do you say you're younger? I'm 49, and now let's just get over it. Let's go. Next. But, but if you say you're 49, that's my joke, and I know you're joking, but there are some people that don't joke about it, and they look awful. If somebody's 55, and they say they're 40. Oh, well, I'm not 50 effing 5, so don't even say that. Don't put that out there. People will think it. I said someone. Uh, they look awful okay. for that. Say you yeah. look five. Say you're five years older. <laughs> that is the stupidest thing I've no. ever heard. I am forty nine. No one has ever said I don't look forty nine. Uh, to your face. <laughs> and if you say, say if you said, say if you said to people you're. If 50, you say an age older than I actually am, um. I'm out of here. So don't make me flip like I've never flipped. Get to the next dating question that people take the time to write in. All right. So we'll answer. Yes. Somebody just asked live, uh, Cine, Cine V. Well, first of all, let me go, go back to Rosemary. Um, oh, thank God. Not that guy again from college matchmaking. No, right, no, he, he, he's done. Uh, uh, Rosemary. The whole page uh, you wrote. He charged people $3 and you did research on a whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that was so mean. I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, now, I, that, <laughs> now that Brian works for me uh, part time, I, I try to be very patient. And one day he said to me, don't worry, just say it like it is. Okay. So then that next day I'm like, that is so stupid. Why would you say that? that and I'm First telling of all, him what he said I could do. And he goes, you're being very hurtful. And then I felt so bad. Uh, so she exaggerates extremely a lot. Everyone knows that. It did not happen that way. 33% uh, exaggeration rate with everything I say. It was similar, but it was not verbatim like that. Uh, Rosemary says that she loves you. She loves this lady. Uh, uh, I love you, Rosemary. Um... Um, I'm, you. Uh, why is she saying this lady? The quote is, hi, I, lady. I love this lady. What, you don't think you're a lady? Joking. Of course, I'm a delicate fawn. My family hates, they hate, hate, hate when I said that for years after my divorce. Okay, go ahead. Um, oh, yes, Rosemary and her daughter. Oh, my God, you guys should be here for a Friday Facebook Live. Love them both. I know who they are now. Good. Yes, I, I, I know who they are, too, because you were working with me. I was working yesterday with you. So I won't yell at you anymore because I feel so bad. Right. But you did tell me to be honest and to tell you no, and not no. No, when you would s say things and then say you were sorry, I said, don't waste your time with that. That's just the way you're talking. So just move on. I know you don't mean it. Just move on. That's what I said. Yeah. So then when I stop saying sorry, you're like, you're hurting my feelings. <laughs> you never said that. Never. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> These uh, are too many family jokes hmm. that people aren't even going to get. Yes, um, and and Cindy V um, has a question. Uh, she was must have been the one that sent you the question. Oh, Cindy. Yeah. Yes, hi Cindy. Cindy, finally you got to figure out how to watch it live. Cindy um, would watch us later on YouTube. She's got a very good question. It's a person, you know, to you. Uh, what's it like growing up with brothers, and did they ever give you dating Great. advice? Um, and then the follow-up question is, what, what? I don't do follow-up questions. Too complicado. One question. That's all I can handle. 
Uh, okay, so we answered that. Did we okay. give you dating advice? Uh, you probably got different advice from the four oh, brothers. Yes, yes. Yeah. Growing up with four older brothers was the greatest thing in the whole wide world. Um, there were different dynamics between all of them. Peter, the oldest, was more like a father figure that I feared and fear to this day. If I get a call from Peter, which I never do, but if I did, I'd be like, oh my God, what'd I do? Um, he never, oh, he gave me business advice. Yes, yes, he's, he's retired now, but very successful. Kevin, retired police lieutenant, um, does everything in the world for me. His dating advice the day after getting divorced was, please get married so I never have to help you around the house do anything. Well, that was and crazy. 20 years later, <laughs> he's like, could you hurry up? I'm done, done. Um, Gerard died, like Cindy. Uh, but actually, Gerard was so cool. He told me, you have to look pretty. You have to wear heels. You're not pretty enough in, if every woman in the room doesn't hate you. That's literally what he said to me. Who is the Cole Collins from Dynasty? Yes, yes that's, that's actually that's what he was like. That's yes. where he would get his advice from. Oh my God, he uh, was so funny. He was the greatest. If only we knew about intervention and stuff back then. But then Brian is Brian. His dating advice is, ah, I don't want to know it. No, I always say it always be yourself because when you relax, because then if, if you're, say if you're pretending to be somebody else, then they fall for that person. Then all of a sudden now you can relax and be yourself. They're going to be like, who's that? She's so if you, start, <laughs> if you start off by being yourself, then, then yeah, you got just be a little radical and, you know, uh, curse more. Okay, so that's what it was like, Cindy, and that's the advice I got. Thank you so much, Cindy, for reminding us. Oh, yeah, Asa. Hello, Asa. Hello, um, Asa. Everybody needs an Asa. Probably Crystal. He was, well, no, I would say he was more like Joan Collins. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, what was her character name? Um, uh, oh. I, I don't know, but we don't have time. Come on, next. Next oh, question. No, I, I can't go on until I think of it. Um, Alexis, thank you. Now my, my machine, yeah, no, that's it. Alexis. Oh, uh, I Alexis, thought you were asking Alexa. Alexis Carrington, that's right. And I was going to say it set off my Alexa. I uh, thank you, Alexa. When Alexa adds extra words to when I ask for a question, like the yes. weather or something like that, and she has to add an extra question or an extra sentence. No, 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 I didn't ask that. So I just find it a waste of time, but go ahead. Uh, um, all right, we go to the questions? Yes. And you yes. answered Cindy's uh, question. I did, I did. Thank all you, right. Cindy, love you. Cindy, yeah. never go backwards. I don't want to put you on hold. It never pays to go backwards. You always have to move forward in a relationship. The same issues that were there will always be there. Next question. The next question is, what was your first relationship like? What did you learn from it? Well, since you're gay, maybe you should answer that because your first relationship was Sheila Cordy, who I caught you making out with across the street. I was 13 years old. That really doesn't even count. So I was in love in high school with Paul Mendolia for two years, 9th to 11th grade. Um, my first, well, I don't really think of my past relationships anymore because I'm in such a good one now. So that's what I base my everything on. Um, I... Looking at how I was sure that it would be right with Brian is is when I saw his mother and father's relationship. They're married 40 years. And when I saw the way they... Saw? You mean saw. When I saw the way they interact with each other, I said he was taught very, very well. He was taught um, 
about love and, and commitment and, and, you know, what a family unit is like. He's very, very family oriented. And once I started so to are we. Him, Yes, I know. <laughs> That's why it was so important. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so when I saw that he shared those same um, family traits that his mother and father taught him, uh, that's when I knew it was real, and that's what I that's when I learned. Um, my other stuff, I don't I don't think of those things anymore. Okay, that's good. Next. You, okay, you don't want to answer. I did. Okay. I was in love in high school for two oh, years, right. okay. but I had to break up with them because we were two opposites. Opposites attract; they're the worst things for us. And the odds of meeting someone in high school and staying compatible your whole life. Very difficult, and just wasn't for me. So um, the next question, friend, is, the next yes. question is, what relationship of yours did you learn the most from? Well, I I already answered that with my with the first one, so you can answer that one. What did you learn the most from? It's annoying. I hate personal questions. Didn't we say this last week? Please stop asking personal no, no, questions. No, because that makes you you. That brings you out as a as a, 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 I think it brings your charm out when you answer these personal questions. You know I have no charm. You tell me that on a daily basis. <laughs> I have no charm whatsoever. I, I tell you on a I, daily basis that you do have charm, and you don't see it. And that's why I think these questions are so great, <clears throat> because they're interpersonal, and they're bringing out, they're making you talk about yourself. <clears throat> Rather talk about my clients, all two thousand of them. Well, they're all pretty. They're all handsome, successful. All right. Um, did I ever learn anything from a relationship? Did I? Did I ever learn? Uh, well, the one thing I would say, you're not going to let me say. And that's my divorce. So I got to skip over that because Brian won't let me say it. Um, any relationship. See how she puts words in my mouth? Okay. So after my divorce, I learned that you shouldn't ever be with someone narcissistic. So I changed from being a former pharmaceutical rep into matchmaking so no one would have to go through that. There's my answer. That's, that's your sales answer. I want to know your real answer. That's not your. That's not a real answer. Okay. What did I learn? Um, yes, Cindy. I will look. Uh, hold on a second. I do have a question. I want to. I want you to answer that follow-up question. Cindy. Right. Yes, yeah, she has that follow-up. I you think see? it's personal. I don't like personal but, questions. You didn't hear the follow-up question. You wouldn't let me say it. The follow-up question is, what do you do with kind-hearted family and friends who think that they know, whoops. That's <laughs> who they, What's whoops? I hit the wrong button. Oh, oh, oh. What do you do with kind-hearted family and friends who think that they know what to tell you to do when you were dating? Do you understand that? No, do you understand it? Just decipher it for me, and I'll, I'll answer it, Cindy, but I have no idea what you're talking about. The follow-up question is, what do you do with kind-hearted family and friends who think they know what to tell you to do when you're dating? Oh, when you're dating and, and, you're, and your kind-hearted family and friends are trying to give you advice, what do you do? I, I would just take their advice. And, not, and, and if you don't like it, don't do it. But just say, all right, thank you Is for that your, your answer. Yeah. I just say, pop. I know what the answer is. Kidding. So, did that answer your uh, question? Um, um, well, first of all, if other people are trying to give you dating advice, uh, I'm uh, Yeah, I'm very advice. bad with that. Yeah. Very, I get so easily annoyed, as you know. Yes, easily annoyed. Somebody's so. asking you. I, I don't see a problem with that, but but I think if a family members they can offer, they're gonna do it anyway. They're gonna right. offer their. Okay, you know what, Cindy? Yes. My family, 
my family since the day I was born still treats me like I'm the youngest, even though I'm 49. You are the youngest. There is, yes, but at 49, I don't need to be told, and whether it's a relationship or anything, every I could any of my family members finds out in five minutes and they'll all call and all give me different advice too. And then they'll sigh, like some of them will sigh together. Jerry and Kevin will sigh together. Or Brian will say something and say, you know, Peter told me that too. So, so it's uh, hard for us four older brothers. Yes. And that's what I think with family and friends, that's, um, that's what you have to do. And that's what they do. And that, that's... You know, it comes with the good and the bad, and not not even that, that that's bad, but you know that's the way it comes. You gotta let let them tell you what they think. Yes. All right, and they do. Right. Um, Thank you, Cindy. Uh, is it a bad sign if someone has no hobbies or active interests? Um, I would. Is this work a hobby? Yes, work is a well. Okay. No, work keeps you busy. But also, you go through um, ups and down, and ups and downs, and when you're interested in stuff, because you know there are things that I'm interested in doing, and then all of a sudden I'll do them for like a month, and then not do it for you know years, like um, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, like, like things like that. Yes. Um, Jerry doesn't watch Facebook Live, so we're safe. Yes. Well. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, is it a bad sign if somebody has no hobbies or interests? Yes, they, yes that's a um, bad sign. But no, everybody has hobbies and interests. Yes. Every, everybody oh, there's like now with me. Yeah. Back surgery is over. I'm on a health conscious path, eating healthy, mm -hmm. drinking six to eight of these a day, swimming, walking, um, enjoying life as I'm working. All right. Blah, blah, blah. The next one, I know, I, I love how the questions are getting very. Um, but not be personal. The personal, like, the person, and, and like fine tuned. Before they were like dating questions, like what do you do when you know? Yeah. Well, you, that's the you, only answers that I know. So. No, but I, I think these questions are, are better because it it shows you know if you want to get to know us, it our answers are are mm -hmm. in these. Uh, Answers. Our answers are in the answers. I don't know what that means, but I like these questions. Um, what is your favorite share song? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I got okay. a favorite share song. So do I. I, I have a funny story with that. Um, okay. Our brother Gerard died. I went away to college in Florida. I'm very close with my whole family, even my in that order. What? Not in oh, that right. order. Actually, no. Gerard, didn't he die when I was? Oh, no, I used to talk to him in college. But no, he must have died then. I, was, I don't know. But, oh, I graduated college in December 88. Right. OK. Um, so yeah. I remember. Oh, that's right. I miss my family so much. And every time I would come home for a break, I would have a whole bunch of all these crazy stories. And remember, everyone would wait at the house for me. Dad and Kevin would come to pick me up from the airport with a diet soda, blah, blah, blah. And I'd say all the funny stories. So, but. And a tuna fish sandwich wrap. What? Yes, yes. So, um, I remember because we were so close, our brother Gerard loved Cher. So, I miss my family so much anytime I didn't have a boyfriend in college, but I always had a boyfriend in college, except for maybe like 40s max. Okay, so going out with this new guy and Cher comes on, and this is when this song first came out, If I Could Turn Back Time. And for some, I said to the guy, oh, this reminds me of my brother Gerard. If I could turn back time. If I could find a way, blah, blah, blah. And the guy goes, yeah, that's weird. That's, that's weird to like that song with your brother. And oh. <laughs> oh. Yes, you got dumped. Yes. 
needless to say, he was dumped. But after he said it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess that does sound creepy. But I was just making a general statement that that was Gerard and I's favorite song together. Okay, what's your favorite Cher My song? My favorite song is not even a famous song. It's a rendition of Danny Boy that she did on, in 1971. Uh, I remember being nine years old watching it, and God, you're so old. I remember, like sitting practically, practically like this in front of my black and white TV set, and listening to her sing "Danny Boy," and um, I, you know, forgot about it for you know 30 years, until now? 40 years, until a couple of years ago with um, YouTube and all that. And I looked it up again, and I watched it, and I said, wow, it's just like I remember it. It is a soulful rendition of Danny Boy. So look it up. Uh, let me wait. Let me write that down before I get back to my clients and all oh, the work. Oh, 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 I have notes. I have notes. And just remember, before you do any laundry or anything else after Friday Facebook Live, we are working. Okay, I know. No laundry. All right, next question. Um, uh, 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 tell us about being in Sex in the City. Uh, <laughs> you must have you mentioned that. That was on the Facebook memory, so someone might have seen the picture yeah. of us when we were auditioning for the movie right. Sex in the City. Right. That was fun. That was, a, that was fun. It was an open cattle call. And we went down, and um, yes, it was a very was hot it. day, and they had to stand out in this beating yes. sun. Yes. And very they hot. finally got us in, and they it really was like a cattle call because they had like yes. 20 lines, and you had to stand behind somebody and then just go up to the counter, and they would ask you some questions, and they say, okay, thank you. And that was it. And we never, <laughs> never heard from them again. And then we saw the movie, and like... But Oh, please, I so could have played that part. No, it was the opposite. It was the second movie that there were... Oh, wait, I can't say this word. Um, everyone was... Well, that was in, in another country. They filmed in another country. Yes. But they, yes, were, but they were casting for... Because the, they did film it, some of it in New York City. Like, the end was in New York City, and that's what they were casting for. The people, sure? in, the back, yeah, the people in the background. 90% of the people were non-Caucasian. So had no. we known what the movie would be about, no. we wouldn't have done it. No, you don't understand. They I understand. I know what you're saying. Blah, blah, blah. They were okay. casting for the New York segments or the wedding segments, the people in the wedding. Right. Uh, Asia, 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 Asa. 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 Everybody needs an Asa. Asa is a background call. Oh, they called it cattle calls. Uh, like Asa a, knows. Uh, I believe him over you, Brian. Um, Asa knows. Yeah. So they wanted background people, and, and for the New York scenes, that's what it was about. And when I would see it, the movie, I said, "Oh, I could play that part." Uh, you want to tell the story of our? first acting class that we did together and the guy told us that we had to take off our shoes and lay on the floor and what I did. Yeah, you said, no, no, all right, I, I, I can't do this. And she got up and she left and she went across the, the hallway and she signed up went for into the, the um, soap opera class. The soap opera <laughs> class. I mean, they wanted us to take off our shoes and lay on the floor on a yeah. hot summer night the floor was filthy there's because, no way i would have ever done that everyone just went and did it like it was nothing i'm like oh, i'm sorry it's because so i did it because we had to feel what it was you know to feel like it had a, I it had a that, tune. anyway yeah. i, I love that class that was a great class uh, <laughs> wait wait and also on the way home I wasn't new to going. I was new to going into the city a lot. Now we have the city no. office. So. You were new to the train. I forced yes. you to take the train. So Brian was saying, this, "I'm like it's dangerous. Someone's going to kill me." Blah blah blah. 
Brian's like, it's fine. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. And then the first night on our way home from the class, Brian and I are sitting by the restroom and this drunk guy comes running towards us like, oh. <laughs> oh. that was so we, great. We both, each of us on both ends, both went to the opposite end of the oh. thing. Oh, it was so, I mean, it was oh. disgusting then, but it was so funny now. I know. Um, yeah, he's uh, giving a definition of a cattle call. Yes, that's what they Everyone that's what needs they call them. That's what they call them, cattle calls. Um, all right, more questions? Um, I like this. If anybody thinks of a question, yeah, we'll yeah. put it out here. Um, oh, I just realized I wasn't sitting up properly. Did, did we hear of the reboot um, um, and the parts of the script that were leaked? I don't even want to talk about that because I don't want to give it away if somebody didn't hear it. So I don't even want to discuss that part. Uh -huh. um, did we hear about the reboot? Uh, yes, I've heard about the reboot, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure that they're going to do a great job, even without Samantha. Um, mm. They're making a big deal about some, no Samantha there. but Because she's probably like 80 now. Oh. Not exactly. pretty anymore. No matter oh. how much plastic surgery she's got, they've all gotten plastic surgery. All of them. It's going to no be matter. cold and just like that. I just so, hope her snoof is on it, Mr. Big. Okay. Yes, I hope so too. And it's going to be. Know, Brian met him on the train. Our, my son, Ryan, Brian's nephew, professional model. Signed with a major agency who was off yesterday also with Brian. And he was on the train one day. I wasn't and I had just I worked yesterday. And I was, oh yeah, but not with me directly yelling at you. So it's not as fun like that. But so I had just mentioned something to Ryan about Chris Nose, because I used to call him Chris North. And then you said to me, What's wrong with you? It's not North. It's Nose. I'm like, how could it be Nose? No one has a name Nose. It is not. And you were right. So that next day, Ryan's on the train. Chris Nose comes on the train. Wish I was there. Okay, go ahead. My celebrity crush, Chris Nose. Oh, no, no, no. New celebrity crush. New one. Law and Order SV. You, oh my God, they killed him off. The IAB guy, Tucker. Oh my God. Oh my God is all I can say. Ladies, who loves Tucker and who is so mad that SVU killed him off on Olivia? Hottest guy ever, ever. Go ahead. Um, speaking of celebrity crushes, uh, who is your celebrity crush now and when you were a child? Boy and girl, uh, answer is mandatory. <laughs> I'd love to know who is giving us a question and telling us mandatory because that <laughs> makes me want to flip like I've never flipped. I love how they have to, because Maureen does not like to be told what to do. Yes. But, please, uh, uh, please. But yes, yeah, so that's a good question. I'll, I'll go first, and maybe it'll spark an answer for you. Uh, when I was a kid, a boy and girl. I already said Tucker, just by some coincidence. Um, I got Tucker on the brain. When I was a boy and a boy, I would say. Um, hey, Brendan boy, you want to be on Facebook Live? Brendan's going to thrive today at five o'clock to volunteer. If anyone doesn't know what Thrive is. It's a wonderful organization that helps people with drug and alcohol issues have a place to go to do a lot of really fun things. Big believer, I think it's fantastic. Good, go. Now I can, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Not well, like you would have said it any faster. Um. <laughs> When I was a kid, uh, I would say um, probably uh, Marsha Brady, uh, and then uh, up my nose. 
And then I like Peter Brady. My and ring security. In my adult way, uh, I have a whole list of, of celebrity crushes in my adult. But the person life. only asks for one. But they only ask for one, but I can give you a list of ten. No, yeah, one. Um, I would say Keanu Reeves and is my number one male celebrity crush, and number one female crush is. Um, don't make fun. Everyone no, hates her. Anyway. Everyone no. hates her, but I, I love her. Melissa Rivers, Joan Rivers' daughter. Annoying as blank. But I find her annoying. Annoying and her annoying. Out of all the annoying people that you could like, she has got to be. Why would it be her? You know what? I, I, it's because only going I, I to annoy me. She gets a bad rap, and I think that she has to play that annoying role of the, the, the daughter. Uh, that, uh, but I really think that she's highly she's really annoying and, and very smart. Um, and she has a podcast which I listen to, so that's that's why oh. she's kind of on my mind. Um, but I, I think that people don't give her credit that she's uh, where credit is due. Anyway, so okay. that's, that's my answer. So you well, I already said Tucker and. Um, no female crushes, but my idol was always Heather Locklear until recently when she hit the wall. Not even recently, years ago. Oh, well, right. She got arrested. Does uh, she have any kids? I don't think so. Hey Siri, does Heather Locklear have any kids? And what about when you were a kid? I would say Christy McNichol for you. Oh, when I was in my athletic days, intercollegiate volleyball and softball, my family used to call me Christy McNichol when she was on the show Family. Because, you know, she was kind of cute then before she you turned so much. Uh, yeah. No offense when I say the word butch. You know, the not meaning to offend anyone that is that. I'm just saying Christy McNichol used to be cute and then continue. <laughs> just, I want to see how far you go. I'm sorry. I really did not mean to. But when she was on that Empty Nest show, she she was quite good and quite... Uh... Oh, no. She had a Lynn face then. Don't you remember? No. I thought she... You look great then. Wow. Uh, How about when Ryan used to do Lynn face? Oh, yeah. I'm no, telling you, my, yeah, my son Ryan was born a star. Uh, yeah, but that's not, that's, not, that's not nice. Well, he never did it in a mean way. He just, just like Kevin and Peter used to be able to talk just like, God, I'm thinking of you stupid ass videos when you're supposed to be working but they used to be able to talk like john wayne and who else james cagney. oh james cagney and they That's did impressive. it to perfection so okay any other questions because we have so much work to do um that was it just eight eight of them today okay Okay, so thanks for tuning in. Hope everyone has the best weekend mm -hmm. ever. And tomorrow is photo day at MTN Matchmaking in the Melville office. So I will be in the Melville office during the day. And um, I'll, be, I'll be in the Houston office all day. Yes, and he will also probably be doing five loads of laundry, which is annoying. But I'll try not to yell too much at him. Tonight. Right. So today I, I will be helping Maureen uh, get you know cause, um, get under the under the rug or get out of the under the rug. What, get me out of the hole. Get me out of the hole. A week 
Uh, so, if, so, if any, so if anybody's waiting for information. They you are, know, from you. Uh, we love Brian. Oh my God, Brian's our favorite. Well, I will take responsibility for that because I was off all week and today is Friday and it did take me a while to get up, up and going because I was a little bit sick and under the weather. I was down for the count for, for a full 24 hours. I was in bed for a full 24 Maybe hours. Maybe COVID. No, I already had COVID a year ago. So, this you get it again. No, I'm fine now. You probably um, don't even take vitamins. I absolutely most certainly do. I'll show you all the vitamins I take. You probably should just start walking more. I do walk. I walk every day. I'll show you my steps. Okay, well then start swimming. I do swim. I <laughs> know you don't. We have a pool <laughs> with a walk. We have a pool within walking distance from our house. And, and our you don't pool. swim every day? Uh, and I you really, have to pull across really the street like me? And it's so hot. Uh, but I, I, I don't. Um, because I'm I bet busy. Kevin's outside, outside the house just waiting for us to finish up before swimming. But he's on his phone looking at it, waiting for it to end. <laughs> so in ten, after we end, 10 seconds later, he'll come yes. in. Uh, okay. Yes, I had, so... Leah, oh, hello, Leah. Hi, Leah. I, I Key West tonight, uh, Key Westitis. Yes, I had such a sore throat. It, I took uh, NyQuil quite a few times, and I slept for 24 hours. I felt mm -hmm. so bad for Brian that we're on vacation, and luckily, luckily for That's us. So much fun. Poor Brian with a Y. Just one day, well, one and a half days, really. And he would just go down to the bar and order food. And, and so he was taken care of, and the people were so friendly. And um, and then, then the next day, I started to feel better. And the day Sunday, I started to feel much better. And we came home on Monday. <laughs> OK, so. We got to get back to work because I'm sitting, we are sitting on over 100 emails. Oh, shoot. And I even have appointments, too. Shoot. Forgot about that. Okay. So, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Have the best Friday ever. We'll see you next Friday for a Friday Facebook Live with me and my brother. Oh, well, wait. One more question before you go. Uh, tell, you know, I want to tell everyone you're in good hands. So, if you're waiting... Just, oh. yeah. I'm still learning. I'm still not getting back as quickly as I, I, I could, but uh, you're in good hands, and, and uh, I'm going to do my best to answer all your questions. Okay, good. Thank you. Bye! That is frightening. That even scares me doing it. <laughs>